Wargamers, today I want to talk about the two hammerhead variants found in Imperial Armor Index Xenos. Um, these are basically just hammerheads with different turrets instead of a railgun or ion, gun, ion cannon. They have um, four different options and they're spread across two different entries, but these different uh, options are basically a um, similar role to these standard hammerheads, but they give you some diversity in terms of uh, being more anti-infantry or anti-light vehicle focused as opposed to the more anti-heavy vehicle that are um, you know, present with railgun hammerheads or the anti-light um, vehicle that are with ion cannons and stuff like that. So um, just some, some different choices for you. And we're going to talk about their strengths and weaknesses in a minute here. Before we do that, though, I want to say thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss any upcoming 8th edition content. All right, so let's get started. Um, basically, there are two different entries in the index for hammerheads. Uh, the first is the heavy bombardment uh, hammerhead gunship, and the other is the fire support hammerhead gunship. And there's not really a difference between the two aside from their turrets, um, but yeah, there are two different entries. It, it doesn't really make that big of a difference. They have the same basic profile as a standard hammerhead. Um, movement 12 at full wounds, weapon skill 6 up, ballistic skill 3 up, toughness 7, 13 wounds, 3 attacks. Again, not that we ever care about that. Um, leadership 8 and a 3 up save. Both, both entries have that, that basic profile. Uh, they have the standard special rules for a hammerhead. Uh, the you know, hover tank, explodes, savior protocols, threat identif identification protocols for the gun drones, uh, and then the attached drone special rule. But what makes them different are the weapons that they can take. The heavy bombardment uh, hammerhead can take a high yield missile pod. It can take two high yield missile pods. So those are the same missile pods that are present on a um, broadside. To refresh your memory, that's a 36 inch range, heavy four, strength seven, AP minus one, D3 damage. So you get eight shots uh, with two of those. And then on the uh, fire support hammerhead, you have three different options. You can either go with uh, twin tau plasma cannon, which you, know, you just get one of those, you don't get two, you just get one. Uh, that's a heavy four, strength seven, minus three AP, two damage uh, weapon. You can switch that out for uh, Twin Heavy Burst Cannon, which is the same uh, basically as, as an option from a Riptide. So 36 inch range, Heavy 16, Strength 6, minus 1 AP, 1 damage each. You can go with the Twin Fusion Cannon, which is 24 inch range, Heavy 2, Strength 8, minus 4 AP, D6 damage. And that does the um, roll 2 dice, select like the highest for damage when you're within half range mechanic. Um, and yeah, those, those are your three different options for the fire support hammerhead. Um, to give you a rough idea of the cost comparison between these and a standard hammerhead, standard hammerhead with railgun is going to be about 170 points. Um, the high yield missile pod variant is about 215. The twin plasma is about 195. Twin heavy burst cannon is about um, 200. And then the twin fusion cannon is about 190. So they are more expensive than a railgun hammerhead, but they give you some slightly different options, and notably, they're not a single shot. Uh, that's one of the biggest weaknesses of the railgun hammerhead is that it's one shot and it's make or break on that one shot. So having multiple shots gives you a little bit more resilience uh, to the randomness of the dice here. Um, all right, so that's the basic setup for these different hammerheads. Notably, if you look at the FAQ, the points values that are in this book are wrong. Um, they actually overcost the hammerhead itself. So if you're going to be doing this calculation, make sure you check that FAQ out. Um, additionally, they changed the keywords for the hammerhead uh, in here as well. So long strikes uh, fire cast exemplar ability applies to these hammerheads as well. Um, without that FAQ, it doesn't apply, so take note of that. That means that these hammerheads also are going to be able to have a two-up weapons or two-up ballistic skill, which is important. Uh, you need that to really make these guys worth it, and uh, it makes them really appealing for multiple 
um, multiple weapon options at that point. Uh, it makes them more competitive options compared to some of the other vehicles or other platforms that you could take those same types of weapons on. So keep that in mind. Um, really, the only options here that I don't like are the fusion uh, cascades. Those um, basically just don't cut it for me. They're nice, they are going to do some damage, but a commander with fusion blasters can do it better for cheaper. So um, I would basically not bother with that one, especially if you're going to spend the money on a Forge World model, spend it on something else. Um, notably, you can't really get these on Forge World right now, but uh, you know, assuming that you could, I would still spend my money on a different Forge World model. Uh, the other thing that I'm not super stoked about are the plasma, um, the plasma cannons. Those are, are good, but they kind of suffer the same thing. You could do a better job with the commander with plasma rifles if you wanted to go with the plasma route. So there's that. Um, that leaves the high yield missile pod variant and the heavy burst cannon variant as the two options that I think are more, most appealing and most valuable out of these four. The uh, high yield missile pod option is um, basically a better alternative to the ion cannon. So if you're going to be taking hammerheads with ion cannons, I would suggest that you consider taking the high yield missile pod version instead. Um, so for comparison, under a overcharged profile, an ion cannon has um, heavy three or heavy D3, uh, strength eight, minus two AP, and then D3 damage each. And for comparison, the high yield missile pod version has eight shots at strength seven. Uh, so you're going down one in strength compared to the overcharge profile on the ion cannon. Uh, but in a lot of cases, that's you know not necessarily going to make a difference. If you're going against uh, like heavy infantry or something, having strength seven versus strength eight is completely fine. Uh, it's minus one AP, so that's a little bit worse. And that's D3 damage. So uh, basically, you're getting a whole lot more shots, whole, more consistent shots on top of that um, for around the same price point. And it's just going to be a more reliable option. It's not going to be as random. So that's really appealing to me. And it has, you know, like I said, a larger number of shots. So this, I think, is a good option to replace ion hammerheads with the high yield missile pod option it's good you know eight eight uh missile pod shots at uh, a two up to hit re-rolling ones if you have a single marker light that, that's hard to beat that's really a solid option right there and i think i think that that's better than ion cannon um the other option that you have that i think is worth taking is the heavy burst cannon so this is basically giving you 16 shots hitting at um, hitting on twos again with minus one AP. Yeah, they're only doing one damage, but still 16 shots. That's killing on average five Marine equivalents in a single round of shooting. And really this is a better platform or a more, more efficient offensive platform for a heavy burst cannon than a Riptide. So I like this. I think it works really well on the hammerhead. And if you are going into an environment where you're looking at a lot of you know, a lot of MEQs, a lot of mechs, or a lot of Terminators, this might be an option that works out really well for you because it does have that little bit, uh, a little bit more spice to it than just a bunch of gun drones or a bunch of fire warriors or a bunch of standard burst cannons. Uh, you're getting a lot more out of this because of that minus one AP and the, the little increase in strength is good as well. So, uh, I think the heavy burst cannon can actually be a really effective tool in those environments as well. So uh, overall, if you're looking at a scenario where you're going to be taking ion cannons, I'd recommend taking the heavy, the high yield missile pot option instead. It's going to be good. It's going to be really good for anti-heavy infantry, and it still can do some work against light vehicles. If you're looking at a scenario where you need a little bit more oomph uh, for mass MEQs or something like that, uh, your uh, high, heavy burst cannon is going to be a really solid option. So I think both of these can actually do a fairly good job in the meta and in the game. I think they work out really well. 
would I automatically include all of these in my army? No, I wouldn't build an army around them. Uh, I would take maybe one or two if you're going for a hammerhead focus list, but I think there are still better alternatives. Cough, cough, Yivara, cough, cough. Uh, that's going to be basically your staple Forge World unit for Tau lists in 8th edition so far. So with that in mind, I think the Yivara is a better investment in points, but uh, and it can do all these things that we're talking about more effectively, by the way. But if you're going for a hammerhead list and you want some vehicles, these are some good options. So in summary, I think both the high yield missile pod and the heavy burst cannon variants can offer some reliable, useful firepower for your Tau army, at least right now in 8th edition. Uh, if you are going to take either of these uh, types of hammerheads, of course, take long strike. Long strike should always be the first uh, hammerhead that you include in your army. All other hammerheads should be secondary to long strike. Just because his benefits to other hammerheads are that good, he's good by himself, uh, and he makes everybody else really good too. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and of course, happy wargaming.